Brave Fensu Musashi is one of my favorite original PlayStation games. In fact, I love the game so much that I actually considered putting it on my top 10 favorite games of all time. You know, that thing I did on Little Ridley that I never finished. Anyway, um, but moving on from that, the game is honestly overlooked. It's kind of a cult classic, but I wouldn't even go that far. It's an odd sort of game, and it's really hard for me to explain why I like it so much. I will warn, though, nostalgia is certainly a factor. So, I'm going to try to approach this review from an unbiased perspective, but that's going to be really difficult. But I will try. I can't guarantee I'll succeed. In fact, I'm fairly certain I won't. But I will try not to give this game more credit than it deserves. It's a good game, but, you know, maybe I like it a little bit more than I should. I don't know. But, let's move on. The game is weird. That, that is that is the best way I can describe it, though. It's a very strange game. I mean, just look at the title. Brave, brave Fencer Musashi. Musashi. Who names a game this? Brave? Yeah, I hope he's brave. He's the fucking hero. Fencer? What's he's you? not a fencer. He's not at all. He's a fucking samurai. Don't you lie to me. And Musashi. Well, that's his name. Okay, I get that. But, you know, Brave Fencer Musashi? He, it's just a bizarre title. And that's really what he's called in the game. He's a legendary hero, Brave Fencer Musashi. Or at least you play the reincarnation of him. See, the whole plot centers around that there's this place called All You Can Eat Palace is under attack from the Thirst Quencher Empire. And I'm... Stop laughing. This is a serious plot that you will take seriously. And the Thirst Quencher Empire is evil. And All You Can Eat Palace is the good guys. And... Serious. God. Damn it. Anyway... But the whole point is that there is that there's Quenchers attacking, and all you can eat asks their princess to summon a hero, because apparently she can do that. This is apparently a normal thing. I don't understand this at all. And the Really, the most infuriating part about this is that I've never understood the whole hero summoning thing. Because she summons Musashi, but he's a legendary hero in their world. Which makes no fucking sense to me, because how can you summon a hero that doesn't exist in your dimension? But he's still from your dimension, because he's a reincarnation of Musashi that existed in your dimension, but you're summoning him... I... What? Is it, are you summoning him from the future? The past? A, another world entirely? They, they say another world, so I assume it's a different... I, I don't get it. I don't fucking get it. It's the weirdest thing in the world, and I've never been able to understand it. And it's just... It's just completely off the wall. The whole game really is, though. Like, whenever I think about Musashi, the more I really go over the different parts of the games, the different elements thrown in, I realize that Musashi is just this weird combination of a variety of different gameplay styles. There's action, there's hack and slash, there's RPG elements, there's puzzle solving, there's platforming, and all of them are blended together so well. And it's even open world so you can wander around wherever you want. It's a weird game, but it all works really well together. The developer did a really good job blending all these different gameplay elements so well. And considering the fact that the plot clearly is meant mostly for laughs and, you know, is meant to be weird, it's almost like they just had a bunch of ideas and wanted to put them all into one game. This, this is a game Squaresoft made in between developing Final Fantasy VII and Final Fantasy VIII. In fact, my copy of the game even came with a demo disc for Final Fantasy VIII. So, this is clearly, clearly Squaresoft just messing around with different gameplay elements and trying to make a game out of all of them. And they didn't do bad! Before I move on with the gameplay, I will talk about the graphics and the sound. The graphics are actually pretty good for PlayStation. Not phenomenal, I've seen better, but considering there's no real cinematics, the in-game graphics don't look too bad. The sound is pretty good. The music is fucking epic. Like, seriously, this is some of the best music I've ever heard in a video game. It has some of my favorite tracks of all time. So, the composition with the musical scores is great. Sound effects work fine, but then there's the voice acting. See, this is the part where I think that the game was mostly developed for laughs, because um, I'm fairly certain almost every single main character, or at least, you know, e even side characters, um, I'm pretty sure every single character in this fucking game is a stereotype, like hardcore. You have freaking what at Livers, who is this British butler who wears a monocle and talks in the most the thickest British accent I've ever heard in my life. I'm Livers, the butler. You have freaking the princess who says like every other freaking sentence, literally. Like what are you saying? Use Lumina. You have Rutrick, who's a redneck. No, seriously. A shark's. 
Shut up, you dumb gal! Or else y'all gonna get a licking, little lad. You have Musashi, who's just a punk kid, on purpose. Yeah, right! You wish, pal! Let go of the princess! You have freaking this guy. Been summoned to save our world. So you can't go back to your world until you save ours. Uh, isn't it just a shame? And you will remain in this world until the absorbed Bincho energy from the summoning disappears. Mm. Uh, that's 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 not that's not even go what he's supposed world. to be. Um, but my favorite Why character is Ribson, who is ha! this old dude who helps out in the palace. And the reason why I like Ribson so much, you ever been to a Renaissance fair and you meet one of the people there, and you meet that one guy who does a really, 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 really terrible medieval renaissance type of accent. Well, Ribson has that accent. It's on purpose. Listen, listen to this guy. After thou defeated first Quencher's abominable roboteth, so we brought it thou to hither roometh. Isn't that fucking awesome? It's hilarious! But enough about the sound. The point is the graphics and the sound are good. Really good. Damn good. Move on, moving on. As I said, the gameplay is a mixture of a variety of elements. The main game, however, is going to be is going to be mostly a blend of platforming and and hack and slash, where you're running around beating up enemies and jumping over obstacles. This is going to be the meat of the game. However, puzzle elements are mixed in. Usually, when you're about to get, say, Lumina or one of the scrolls late in the game. Oh, I think I forgot to mention that. The main plot has you running around getting this legendary sword called Lumina, which you get in the fir first act, and then after that, getting the five scrolls that hey, will give Lumina some pretty awesome powers, namely stop. Earth, Water, Fire, Wind, and Sky. This is what each act centers around, which is getting these these artifacts, usually fighting a boss at the end. And by usually, I mean you are fighting a boss at the end. What am I talking about? Anyway. The puzzle elements are actually pretty good, and there's a nice difficulty curve, where early on they're pretty decent to solve, but you feel gratified solving them, and then later in the game they get far, far more difficult. One of my most memorable puzzles is in this game of all time of any video game. It involves the meandering forest, which is one of my favorite locations ever in a video game. Basically, it's a forest with a curse on it, so you end up getting lost on purpose because the forest tricks you. The idea is to figure out which direction to go in each zone. It's a really simple concept, but the music and just the very environment you're in really, really increases the vibe the forest gives. I love it. There are also RPG elements. The main town is, is your hub, or base I should say, where you run around, you talk to people, and you buy items. This is where the RPG the role playing aspects come in. The items will help you along the way, mainly no. increasing both your Bincho Tide energy, before. which is important if you want Musashi to be healthy be and fighting, and your health, which is important for you is living. That? Most of the townspeople actually have some pretty useful stuff to say. Sometimes it's not that helpful. But most of the time, they will have things that you can use. A big part of the game is running around finding these things called Bincho Fields, which people from the palace are trapped in. Each person you free will help you on your quest. Some help you a bit more than others. Some are required to, 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 to get through the game, so you are going to want to free them if you, if you come across field. one. Better get them out. One of the biggest parts of the game is using Fusion, which is the sword that they give you. Fusion has these has this weird ability where if you hold down the R1 button, charge it up, and throw it at an enemy, you can actually suck the enemy in and steal their power. Each enemy has a different power, and this is a really interesting feature. It's used to solve a lot of the puzzles, especially early in the game, and a lot of the powers you get late game are ridiculously helpful, especially in combat. Just the variety of different locations you can look at, and just exploring is fun. You just it, It's just one of those feel-good games where every time you do something or something happens or you level up, which there is a level-up system in the game, not that it really matters too much, it, you mostly get it just by doing the basic story stuff anyway. It's just a feel-good game. It makes you feel good for doing stuff. It makes you feel good for solving puzzles or finding stuff or completing a quest for somebody. Everything just makes you feel good. And... I think that's what video games are for. 
video games usually aren't supposed to make you feel frustrated or angry, not that this game doesn't have those, there's this one part of the game that I still think, to this day, is the biggest fucking bullshit in the world. I hate it! I don't have any footage of it, it's later in the game, but good god, fucking Steamwood, man. Fucking Steamwood. It's basically a timed mission where you have to go and keep this thing from blowing up, and if you mess up, you have to start the whole process all over again. It's annoying as shit, and I've failed it before, just because uh, it's so brutally obnoxious and unforgiving. You have to do it twice in the game, too, which makes the whole thing so much better, right? But getting back to good points, the bosses are fucking awesome. Some of the best bosses I've ever seen in video games is in this game. Like, the first boss, I'm sorry, has the most epic entrance I've ever seen. Whoa! What's that? Holy smokes! Fucking boss, all right. I'm sorry. Yeah, I know. I'm going fanboy for this game, but fuck you. All right, all right, all right. All right. I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be on the level here, and I'm gonna try to get back to complaints. <clears throat> okay, the combat can get kind of dry late game because you end up doing the same stuff over and over and over again. And I would almost argue that later in the game, especially during the final act, the combat gets almost too difficult. The enemies take forever to go down sometimes. Which is why I said that fusion is actually important. There is literally a part of the game that I couldn't get through because the enemies refused to fucking die. So I actually absorbed one of their powers and blasted them to into oblivion. Which actually worked, it turns out, but it was still annoying. I feel like some of the scroll powers especially aren't utilized very well in the game too. Each one kind of solves a few puzzles, but... For example, wind, it, you don't use it very much. It's just not a useful uh, useful ability. Sky is, it makes you fly. Again, don't have footage of it later in the game. But that's useful. But wind, I don't know. Fire was pretty underwhelming too. At least I used that in the ice palace though. Another problem I have, and this is a minor nitpick I know, but for the love of god, Musashi can't swim. And I've always hated that. I don't understand why water is such is such a huge obstacle for him. He does, he just sinks like a rock every time you fall in. Why? It's just water. I mean, come on. Uh, is it that hard to learn to swim? I don't know. It seems like unnecessary damage, unnecessary annoyance. Speaking of annoyance, uh, fuck these mushrooms. Like, seriously. I hate these stupid things, and I've always hated them. They put you to sleep every time they hit you, and that is the most annoying thing in the world. It means you always take an extra hit from them and lose way more HP than you ever would. I, I, I've never figured out how to really fight them. I usually try to jump over them and get around, but because we're in this narrow passageway, that is way more difficult than it sounds. Okay, okay, last complaint. I know I said the graphics were good, but there is one thing about the graphics that always drove me nuts. Do you, do you see that? You see that off in the corner? That freaking that frickin blue gradient? What is that? That's where the game won't load part of the screen. You actually have to pass it, go down the path for it to load the other part, and it unloads the part before. It's to save memory, but it just looks bad. Like, you know, at least put black there, or something that looks like, oh, you know, we, we can't load this bit. The blue gradient, it looks like it's supposed to be sky, but the camera's overhead, looking down. The sky is in the exact opposite direction of where the camera is facing. It looks ridiculous. So, that bothers me, but other than that, you know, there aren't that many complaints with the game. It's just a fun, feel-good kind of title. It has a lot of different variety, which means there might be something for everyone with the game. And honestly, if you ever see a copy of it, I implore you, give the game a chance. Never play the sequel, though. Never, ever play that. That's awful, evil, disgusting, oh god, Jesus, fuck, get it away, now, just go. He's gone, good. Ugh. Oh. This is Darkness, and I bid you all a fond farewell.